Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and welcome back to a really short episode of Projections uh, this week, because I really just have a little bit of a PSA, a public service announcement for you today. Now, this was discovered uh, on Reddit in the past 24 hours, but I thought you should know if you haven't read about it yet, but the Oculus Quest, which is about a year old now, is released uh, May 21st of last year, uh, has of course supported new features since its release, including experimental hand tracking, as well as the Oculus Link feature. And the Link feature is now something that has been enhanced as well because it works not only with the Link cable that Oculus sells, but also with any USB-C 2.0 cable as well, including the one that comes with the Quest in the box. That's right, so remember back at Oculus Connect, there was a big deal that was made of the Oculus Link feature, and to support that, you could buy a cable from Anker, like a three meter cable, but to get five meters of playable uh, tethered VR, you would need to buy this fiber optic cable from Oculus, this is $80 still is $80 and it worked great. You know, I played Half-Life Alex on this as well as Oculus uh, PC games such as Stormland or Lone Echo. Uh, but uh, if you opt into the public test channel, that's right, you open your Oculus app on your desktop, go to settings, go to beta and toggle the public test channel, uh, what will work then is this, the charging cable that comes with the Quest itself. It's still USB-C to C. It's shorter than the Oculus Link cable at three meters versus five meters, and it's not fiber optic. Uh, it charges slower as well. If you go to Thingiverse, you can even find the 3D print file for what's the equivalent of this clip that can attach to the cable and clip to their headband uh, to make the weight off of the side, the L connector. Uh, but the experience is exactly the same. And in fact, if you run a USB speed test between the link cable and this bundled charging cable, uh, you're gonna get about 360 megabits per second on this cable versus about two gigabits per second on the link cable. But as it turns out and has been talked about by developers and reported on, the Oculus Link feature as it currently is implemented only really uses about 150 megabits per second on the compression side. So back at Oculus Connect, there was a whole uh, developer talk about how the link feature worked and how they were optimizing for latency by doing things like time warp on the headset, but also for visual fidelity, they were compressing the image that you'd be rendering on your desktop or your laptop to really focus on the center of the images, essentially doing a little bit of foveated rendering uh, to get that resolution and the bit rate down to 150 megabits per second. Now that's both on uh, the encoding side and also on the decoding side. And it's also been reported that there's a little more headroom on the decoding side on that Qualcomm 835 chip. And even John Carmack has talked about wanting to find ways to improve the compression, improve the visual fidelity to better saturate a USB 3 connection. But as of right now, if you're gonna use the charging cable or any other USB 2 cable, including USB A to C type cables, like you know a cable you'd find with your smartphone, you could play desktop VR with a cable like this um, for a sitting experience. And actually what's even more helpful is that a lot of PCs have front panel connectors without USB-C, just USB type A, and so you don't have to go back to the, your motherboard and plug in a USB-C connection. Super convenient. It is a beta feature right now. It wasn't even put in release notes. So thank you to uh, the Reddit users who discovered that and why they reported it. And hopefully it helps you uh, if you were thinking about purchasing this cable. Extension cords all work USB extenders. So you can use that as well. Um, and there are plenty of great VR games that you can take advantage of. So hopefully that's useful to you. I'd uh, love to know what you're playing these days one year into the release of the Quest. We'll have more games coverage next week and in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.